Hi, I'm Jim Zub. I'm a professional comic book writer. And in addition to the advice that I offer on my website uh, through a series of blog posts and the scripts and pitches that I have on my Patreon account, I thought it would be good to do a series of videos just as a little bit more personal way to talk about the comic writing process and working in the industry. So I've been taking questions from uh, the people who support me on Patreon and also over at the Comic School Discord. This question comes from Ken Barnett. What are common pitfalls you've seen authors with a background in prose make when writing comic scripts and collaborating with artists for the first time? That's actually a really good question, Ken. Um, I think a lot of people assume that writing in one medium can be very similar to writing in another. That if you can write a story in prose, you can write a screenplay or you can write a comic script or you could write a stage play or, or a musical or anything else like that. But the reality is, although these disciplines do carry over, you know, if you understand good storytelling and good character, that can absolutely help you in one medium or another. They are different. You know, writing prose is not writing a comic book. And even if you've been successful at one, you definitely need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the other in order to be better at what you want to do. Uh, a lot of times people will look at comics and graphic novels as a way to adapt a, uh, a failed, you know, prose pitch. And the reality is not every story is going to adapt over well. And, and adapt really is the key word. You can't just port over a novel and make it a comic and suddenly all the flaws go away. If there's, you know, problems with character, problems with plot, problems with story, those are going to carry right through to the graphic novel or the comic or whatever, you know, page you're going to be working on. But not only that, you have to play to the strengths of that medium. And comics are a visual medium. They're the interplay of, you know, imagery and words. And the artist is a massive part of that process. The artist is going to determine the look and the feel and the pacing and the impact that each of those pages have far more so than your text in the vast majority of cases. So you need to learn when to get out of the way, quite frankly. A lot of prose authors, I think, you know, completely understandably have learned to lean on their words. That is how they have created imagery all this time. But the reality is the majority of the writing you're gonna be doing on a comic project is behind the scenes. You're generating a script that's going to be read by the artist, read by the editor, the publisher, anyone involved with approvals, you know, and the colorist and the letterer and everyone else. But the only front facing text is going to be the dialogue and the captions that make it to the finished page. So being able to generate the material that excites, you know, the artist that excites the rest of the team, while also knowing how much or how little of that text is going to play out on the final page is really, really important. And a lot of that comes through practice. In the past, I've found that a lot of prose authors feel like they have to barrage the page with their text, that they feel like they're not earning you know, their place unless they have covered a lot of uh, the page in dialogue. And don't get me wrong, I've done some dense dialogue pages and witty exchanges and, and all that world building and narrative stuff that needs to happen to make a comic work, but, there have to be those moments to let it breathe. You have to be able to let go of the idea that the text is the most important thing and give way to the strength of the visuals because in the end, that is going to sell the story. You have to learn to collaborate with the artist and build up you know, an understanding in them in terms of what is most important to you about the story and also to let them contribute in a big, big way. Comic storytelling is not a simple delineation. A lot of times writers are getting praise or getting, you know, the lion's share of the credit on stuff where the artist is bringing a, a vast amount of that to the final product. And so I think as a prose author, you may be used to having solo credit on this thing, that you're considered the creator, that you're considered sort of the, the, the creative lead on how this stuff all comes together. But, you know, not only um, bringing the artist in as early as possible, but making sure that you have an interplay with them and that you're communicating with them, talking and asking, you know, what do they want out of this project? How can you lean into their strengths to get the best final result possible? 
on the screen right now is an example from my first issue of Conan the Barbarian. This is Conan number 13. And there's quite a bit of text on the page, but it's really narrative that's trying to weave a certain impression as we open up the story. You know, a, a Robert E. Howard influenced uh, character like Conan, I'm gonna get a bit more poetic with the prose. I'm gonna let the text kind of fill in some of those gaps and, and add to the atmosphere. And yet even here, the art is really what's drawing your eye most of all and helping to set up all these elements in a super strong way. Uh, and what you'll notice is after these six panels, each one with a series of captions building up that atmosphere, when we go to the two page spread, I get the hell out of the way. I let those visuals speak for themselves and let you get washed up in this, you know, washed away by the, um, the two page spread and what it entails, this celebration and the kind of chaos that's happening here, the good spirited air that's, you know, been brought about by this, by this celebration in this town that Conan is visiting. And so, um, you know, this is where it would be really easy to bombard the page or, or, or think that you need to add a bunch of text to justify your role in the story. But the honest truth is some of the best comic book writers are not about you know, how much they write. It's about the quality of the text and it's about creating those uh, inspiring moments that set the art team off in, in the best path possible, that give them the momentum and the excitement to build these worlds and bring people in the door, you know? Here's another example. This is from Stone Star. So this is a space fantasy series that Max Dunbar and I created for Comixology Originals that's now being published in print by Dark Horse. And this is a dense dialogue page. There's a lot of interplay. There's a lot of stuff going on. And the information that's coming across is important. It's setting up, this is the first time we meet this character, Volness. So it's setting them up in terms of attitude. It's giving us a sense of their worldview and everything else. And the next couple pages are this interplay as the characters are wandering through, you know, Stone Star and seeing kind of the, the city inside the space station. And yet, I think probably the most valuable panel on this sequence is on this third page of their dialogue together, that silent panel. I think prose authors assume, again, because they're used to uh, using text in everything they do and creating imagery in text, that they have to bombard the page with dialogue or with description. And the reality is that silent panel on the bottom left, that breath, that little paused moment creates an atmosphere and creates a sense of tension and then pay off very quickly. It's a small one just on this page, but in my experience, a lot of prose authors would not uh, give that space, would not have that silent beat. They would feel like they have to justify every single panel with uh, prose. So if you're a prose author and you're coming to comics for the very first time, analyze the form, analyze the medium, look closely at what has been done before, not because you wanna copy it, but because you wanna learn from its strengths. Where is a good spot for you to use text? Where is a good spot for you to describe something in depth? And where is it most effective for you to get out of the way and let the artist do what they do best, which is bring big, awesome, epic imagery to the page and make a final product that's even stronger, you know? Don't feel like you're not contributing just because there's no text on a page. If you set up the story well, if you've set up the characters well, the emotional intensity, what's at stake, all those different pieces, then you've done your job, then you've been effective and clear, and the reader will enjoy those big visual moments that you've helped to generate. And the artist will get to flex and, and show off their strengths and everyone feels better for it. You know, don't be neurotic about machine gunning as much text down on the page as possible. And, and that holds true also, even after you've written the script, you know, it's really important to go through in the lettering pass when you see what the artwork finally is based on what you've written, take another pass through that text. Even better if you can do it before the letterer has done their version and make judicious choices. A lot of times I will go through a script and realize that a piece of dialogue is no longer necessary 
because it's come through clearly in the text, the attitude of the character or their motivations or, or any of those kinds of things are much clearer now that I have the visual backing it up and I can cut some of that text down or I can simplify some of that dialogue to leave more room for the visuals or to just let it you know, stand on its own. And having the confidence to do so makes for a better final product. So that is your goal in the end. It's not about being the writer in the sense of, I am going to write and write and write. It's about, am I telling a good story? Are we as a team creating the best final you know, comic possible? Ken, I hope you found the answer helpful uh, as I went through and, and tried to show examples and, and broaden your understanding of how the comic medium works. If uh, you want to ask any questions of me about working in comics, about the comic writing process, feel free to join my Patreon page. Uh, while you're there, you can dig through over 250 scripts or pitches that I've put together for almost every major publisher in North America, or just go to the free articles that I have on my website, over 40 blog posts talking about how to pitch your stories, how to break into comics, how to find an artist to collaborate with, all that good stuff. It's my absolute pleasure to talk about the medium that I love and the working process and getting to work with so many amazing artists. You know, the examples that I showed here are from Conan the Barbarian, in this case, drawn by Roj Antonio, uh, from Stone Star by Max Dunbar, and uh, from Wayward, drawn by Stephen Cummings. You know, everyone involved in the teams on these books, whether that's Marshall Dillon, the letterer, Tamara Bonvillain on colors or Espen Grundahiran on colors on, on Stone Star. Everyone involved in these books is a part of that team. And we get to work together to build these really cool stories. And I do feel you know, that they're ours, that we as a team have generated this thing. And without each person in the chain, we wouldn't have that final end result and it wouldn't be as strong. And so you know, I guess probably the best advice I can give for prose authors is just understand, unless you are the person generating every aspect of the comic, unless you're drawing it, coloring it, lettering it, editing it, there are other people in the chain. And so I know prose writing might be a much more singular experience, but um, the best thing you can do to change your kind of mindset as you move from prose to comics is think about that teamwork aspect Think about how to be a good collaborator and how to communicate with everyone to make the best comics possible. Otherwise, I hope you're doing well and that the summer is going strong for you. Go forth and make a bunch of comics.